Well, just out of uh, Shambhavani Station, one of the largest events of this sort in United States. Over 2500 people for Shambhavi Mahamudra initiation in Long Beach, California. A very exuberant lot of people. The important thing is more and more people, particularly young people, are definitely becoming very intense seekers. You should see these events to believe how intense and powerful these situations become. Shambhavi Mahamudra has become a champion of transformation. After coming from Singapore to San Francisco, over <laughs> seventeen hour flight and I got there and uh, the very next day we had this event at uh, Stanford Business School. This was a conversation with uh, Jonathan Koslet, who is heading the, the Texas Pacific Group, one of the largest investment companies. And uh, this was a conversation with both students and faculty attending the meeting. What is wonderful about Stanford University right now is that sustainability and the significance of human consciousness being an important vehicle for sustainability is becoming very apparent and slowly that culture is gaining ground in Stanford University particularly and I'm sure it is so in many other universities. So it was a joy to be there and uh, I think uh, generally there has been a very positive response because what was vaguely forming as a movement in this region when I articulated very clearly how consciousness is the basis of sustainability without human consciousness, there is no way to craft businesses, there is no way to craft an economy which is inclusive and sustainable. So this movement is growing particularly in the West Coast in California, to be specific. The university students and the young people and the entrepreneurs are very much moving in this direction, which is very positive and I'm sure it's not far that the entire world will be thinking and looking towards these solutions. And as a part of that, uh, tomorrow evening we also have another event a conversation with Ed Bagley, who is a Hollywood personality, very committed to environmental causes. And here also the conversation, uh, the title for the conversation, uh, that consciousness is the key for sustainability. So this idea, this movement, this awareness is definitely gaining currency. I think everybody who is concerned must put necessary force behind this because without the raising of human consciousness, without an inclusive consciousness, there will be no sustainability. When we say consciousness, today morning I was uh, doing an interview for a local media a magazine, a fashion magazine, can you beat that, uh, called Flaunt. So, uh, they were talking about, the, this uh, young uh, journalist was asking me how to expand our consciousness. So the essential thing that everybody needs to understand is, there is no such thing as expanding our consciousness. We are talking this language because we are always identified with limited aspects of life. We are identified with our body, which is definitely a limited boundary. We are identified with our mind and thoughts and emotions, which is again a limited process. We are essentially identified, the modern education systems have made us identify with our knowledge, which means a bank of memory that we carry within ourselves. Memory is a limitation, it is a possibility on one level, on another level, it is also our boundary. What I know and what I do not know is a kind of boundary. What I know is the boundaries in which I live. The yogic system, always the first and foremost thing that you do is you get identified with what you do not know, the intelligence of ignorance, because our knowledge is always very limited. 
doesn't matter how much we think we know, it's very, very minuscule compared to the size of creation or cosmos. Our ignorance is boundless. In being identified with our ignorance, we also become conscious, more and more conscious. So what we are referring to as consciousness is essentially that which is beyond the boundaries of our physical form and of our psychological structures. So what is beyond physicality has no boundaries, it's boundless. What is boundless cannot be expanded. Clarity has to arise that we don't have to do anything to expand our consciousness, there's no such thing, it is anyway in the lap of consciousness that the existence itself is, we just have to disidentify with the limited identities that we have taken on of body, mind, society, family, education and variety of other things in terms of race, religion, nationality, gender. Our identification rises beyond the limitations with which we are identified. Consciousness is anyway all out, there is no need to expand this. Last three weeks, as you know, most of you are aware, has been a, a super fast roller coaster, <laughs> to say the least. So, day after tomorrow, getting back to Triple I or our center in Tennessee, and uh, the space and the silence of the Tennessee center is very healing and very good for recovering for a battered and bruised body. So, looking forward to a couple of days being in that space and then of course we are active, we are in Philadelphia and various other things happening. So, on this day, I want all of you to at least think, if you are not there experientially, it's all right. Today spend a little bit of time and every day spend a little bit of time to at least think, thought can never be boundless, but at least try to think beyond the limitations which you're normally identified with in terms of body, your likes and dislikes, your family, your race, your religion, your nation. Beyond that, beyond even the human species, just try to think how you relate it to everything. What is your relationship with the sun, the moon, the universe? Just at least in thought, if you're willing, I can bring this experience to you as a living experience. But if you're not at there, at least in thought, think beyond your limitations, it'll be a wonderful beginning for you. <laughs> Here in California, Los Angeles to be specific right now, weather is fantastic. I wish I had a little more time. 